We're joined by New Mexico State men's head coach Marvin Menzies. Coach, can you just start off with your overall thoughts on what you're expecting from your team this year? A lot of fun. You know, this is going to be a great year. Um, for more than the the obvious reasons, you, you want to win games. So I, I do think we'll win a, a bunch of games this year, but I just have a really fantastic team. I got some great seniors and you know, four, four seniors with three of those guys being fifth-year seniors, I think that always elevates a mid-major program when you have an opportunity to, to go into uh, in a battle with some, with some leadership and some experience. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I, I think the, com the competitiveness of the WAC is going to be a lot higher than most people think. I think there's going to be some, you know, a lot of parity there. So that's fun. That's always, competition is always good for business there. And um, excited about our non-conference schedule as well, you know, at Baylor, uh, at uh, Wichita State, at St. Mary's, um, at Wyoming. We've got some good games there to, to really make it a, uh, you know, some, some, some good opportunities, you know, I'd like to say, because we, we can steal a couple or two or three, and then, you know, next thing you know, you got the RPI where you want it going into conference. So uh, just excited about the overall, um, you know, prospects for the, for the season. Coach, what's your perception of the WAC as a league and how it stacks up on a national scale? Well, on a national scale, obviously, we still got a ways to go. Um, you know, on paper, I, I don't think we're uh, in, in the mix yet. Um, but we have a lot of young programs that I, that I do think are investing into their programs and putting back. And I think that's the key. If the administration uh, reinvests into to those coaches and those programs, I think we'll continue to grow. Uh, I think that uh, right now, obviously, we, we kind of have the bar set, um, but there's still a lot of competition there. I mean, you know, we were hands down favorite last year, and uh, there was crazy talk of us, you know, going undefeated in conference and so forth. As a coach, you you know, you don't you don't take that to heart too much because you, you understand that there's 18 to 22 year olds that you're relying on to, for that to happen. So, um, but what we did have was some very, very competitive, uh, aggressive play based on, based on that, that uh, prediction and people really came at us and did a good job and, uh, and didn't win the, the regular season, which is one of our goals this year. And Utah Valley did a great job with the, you know, a coach that's been there for a while, that's experienced, that had some seniors like we talked about. So, so I thought that that added a lot of, you know, uh, excitement to the to the uh, competition during the conference play. So overall, I would tell you that that you know I'm excited about the parity in the conference. Now, yourself and New Mexico State have been here through a couple of changes in the recent years. How do you compare where it is now to where it's been in the past? We've come a long way. You know, I, I think we've had the the. You know, we have some highs, we have some lows, you know. Um, but as far as a, an overall program from in, in, in respect to, you know, from academics to our fundraising to the whole nine yards, uh, we've, we've grown a, a great deal. I think our APR, our four-year average has increased every year since I've been there. Um, our community service is off the charts. We're close to 600 hours last year. Community service led the campus on all of our uh, com community service hours where, um, you know, we're winning games, we're winning rings, and uh, our, our tip-off banquet is in a couple weeks, and it's almost already sold out. I think we got like 30 seats left in the, on the Pan Am floor, and, and that's uh, indicative of the, you know, people supporting you when you, when you win. Everybody loves a winner, man. <laughs> Coach, obviously you had a lot of success over the past few years. You've won the WAC three obviously. years in a row, clearly. <laughs> um, and also having a number of returning seniors that mm -hmm. have experience winning. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. critical do you think that is for your team and the younger players moving forward to learn from older players that know how to win? You, you can't measure it. You know, you really can't measure it. It's um, anytime you have a senior class, I think your, your team is pretty much identified by those seniors. So if you've got some quality kids, not just quality players, but if you got some guys that have some character, you know, that are solid people. We had Kevin Aronis and Ronaldo Dixon last year, uh, two seniors that were, were, you know, top five all time in my guys in terms of players that I want to coach that have my back in the locker room and uh, all of those uh, intangibles that you can't measure. Um, I think when you look at that and, and you measure what we have this year with four guys that in DK and, and uh, Daniel and Chili and Remy, you, you, all four of those guys have been through some wars with me, you know, and Daniel could, this could be his uh, fourth, actually, uh, NCAA tournament. I don't know where Chili and those guys rank in there because I know Chili missed one year 
Uh, I don't know if he went his freshman year, but I know for sure Daniel's one that could go. And, and obviously DK only, uh, this being his second year, had, has a chance to compete, you know, his whole tenure there as well, you know, going to the tournament. So I think that experience um, is, is something that if they transfer and they conceptualize and they learn from all those lessons, you know, the losses that you had in conference last year, and, and they take those and say, you know, they – take them to heart and, and learn from them rather than just being sad that you lost. <laughs> it's like, okay, what do we, okay, so how do we not do that again? And, and then pass that message along to the younger guys. And, and obviously, you know, that's something that, you, like I said, you can't measure because coaches, we, we're old guys, you know, so they're going to take what they're going to take from us. And uh, we repeat it enough, so some of it sticks. But, but they listen to each other. I mean, kids listen to kids, man. And so you put yourself in a situation where that locker room is, is tight and there's full buy-in, and they're saying the right things. Oh, it, it can get special real quick. Coach, you guys are starting off the season playing against Wichita State, who's ranked number eight in the country in the preseason polls. Right. Is that something your team is putting a lot of focus on? And, you know, if you were to come away with a win, then you get a lot of national recognition for that. Mm hmm What's the attitude of your team going into that game, and how confident do you feel? Uh, you know, honestly, we haven't talked about any particular game yet. Uh, it's still kind of, you know, early in, in practices, and, and uh, the things that we're teaching right now we're focusing on are really all about us. I know it sounds kind of cliche, but I'm sure the coaches have thought about it. I'm sure coaches have already watched film, but – uh, we haven't shown them a speck of film on them, and and you know they know who they have. They know Van Cleef, and they know the shooters. And they know you know they they watched them last year. It's just you know they're building the storied program right now. So I'm sure they've marked it on their own little calendars at home and that are hanging on their wall. But uh, but as a group, we haven't addressed it. Coach, a couple years back there were some changes in terms of how off-season practices go and then in terms of the run-up to the season. Has that made a difference for you and the guys? Well, only in the fact that I get to celebrate my birthday in, in Las Vegas every year now. So, you know, I'm very happy about the rule change, uh, quite frankly. So uh, Tammy and myself will be going to a show tonight based on the rule change. And uh, outside of that, that's about it. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Obviously, there's, uh, there's been some value to it for us. Um, we don't start like most schools start with the with the pomp and circumstance and the you know the midnight madness and all of the blackouts and all the different uh, promotional deals that they have. We just go to work. You know, when our first day uh, hits, you know, it's it's we open it up a few days after and we let some students in to an open practice and some faculty and staff. And um, yesterday we had we had faculty and staff in practice and then we did a season ticket holder practice where. They can come in, come in and, and kind of um, watch practice, but it's not a, a celebratory type deal, you know. Um, so having those, those, I think having those practices early gets you get you ready earlier. Obviously, if you're starting October 15th, uh, which was the old regime, and and, um, and and you play 30 days later, that's tough because now you got to grind them like crazy the first couple weeks, and you're going double days on a weekend, and you you know you. You're hitting them pretty hard early because in coach's mindset, we got to get them ready, got to get them ready, you know. But now, you know, with the, the 40, I think, what is it, 42 days, I think, before your first game, now you can, okay, put them at a pace where it's easy on their bodies, but yet you, you still have enough practices with them and enough time with them to prepare them for their first real competition. So I like the rule a lot. I was in favor of it when we voted on it. Is, the, is having that 12 off days in there with the 30 practices one of the biggest differences in terms of being able to give them a little bit of a break? I think it's good for them. I think, uh, again, you know, it's uh, we go hard. I mean, we go really hard. The way we practice, um, I think their bodies need rest as much as we might not want to admit it. You know, we need to think back to – you know, we were growing up and how we had to track to the snow to get to practice and stuff, you know. So we think we're all really tough as coaches, but <laughs> we go at these kids really hard. So we need, them to, we need them to get that rest. And I think it's good for them both academically and, and from a physical rest standpoint. How about the, uh, the summer individual sessions? Do you see players getting better? As oh, that's that? huge. That's huge. I've, I've been an advocate of that for years. And um, really, it, it's... It has so many, so many uh, components to it that make it valuable. There's the obvious, which is the kids have a chance to get high-level instruction throughout the summer and, and, and take those lessons and go and work on their own game on their own and, and so you can tweak things and so forth. But it also gives coaches an opportunity to, to grow their coaching staff and to get guys better and, and, and work with the, the staff to, to basically enhance their abilities um, 
I, one of my coaches, who was my associate head coach, Paul Weir, uh, you know, puts a lot of time in in the summer. So does so does the other guys. Keith Keith Brown, who's a seasoned head coach for me, a former former head coach. Um, you know, he basically runs the summer for me in terms of. Uh, so I can go and have a vacation, you know, which which I'm learning from my, you know, my my peers that I need to shut it down every once in a while. So I'm trying to do that. Um, but you know, at, at the end of the day, I think there's just there's just a lot of value to it. Um, you, you can stay hands on with the guys. You know, you can talk about what are you guys eating, how they're doing academically, and you know, there's no bonding like on the court bonding. So even if it's only a couple hours. That's that's their that's their sanctuary, man. That's when they they're locked in and they're trying to get lessons. So I think it's valuable. Another change coming into last year were the rules as far as the block charge and some of the stuff you guys can do defensively. Looking back, what's your review of that and how the changes went overall? I, I think if and I think most coaches would agree um, from the guys that I've talked to at least. I, we just got to get consistency, and then we have to have um, however we're going to call it early. We need to call it the same way late. I, I just think that's part of the. Part of the deal, I think, is as far as officiating is concerned. Uh, you know, I spoke with a couple uh, at a couple official uh, clinics this summer, and they just uh, they just need to keep whatever they're doing and the emphasis they have in the first ten games. And <laughs> these still be the between eleven and twenty and twenty and thirty games. And if we can do that, then I, you know, I think the kids will adjust. Yeah, just one more. Please, okay. I have to go get some coffee here, so let's hurry it along. All right, Coach, last year uh, you lost Sim to the NBA. Okay. Um, you Forgot about that, by the way. Thanks for reminding me. Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ruin your day, but you're in Vegas. You're yeah, that's right? true. I'll go make it up. <laughs> yeah. You were able to sign his younger brother. Mm -hmm. So how, how does he look? Is, are there a lot of similarities between the two, or do you feel like he's got a lot of growing to do? Talk about him. They're, they're, that's a good question. They're... Um, they're same. They're the same person uh, in terms of, you know, you got another seven plus, seven foot plus guy that's going to help you defensively and is going to do some things to change people's shots and 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 help you in the paint. But then they're very different in a lot of other ways. When you start talking about their ability to to score, is is, is a different way. You know, Tamvir is a little more. Um, up and under, you know, uh, a little more agile. Uh, Sim could flush it, it just drop step and dunk on you. So, I mean, it was a different type of offensive arsenal for both of them. But defensively, they do a lot of similar things. And uh, we got to get, you know, Tamvir to have the, the, the block, shot blocking instincts that, that, that Sim had. And, and uh, that, that'll help him as he grows through his career as well. Last one real quick. So having Sim go into the NBA, do you feel like that's, uh, improved your ability to recruit players? No, I'm a fantastic recruiter regardless. So it really is irrelevant. Uh, I'll get in high major guys just because I'm fantastic with the relationships. So, uh, no, obviously, yeah, that'll help us. And especially if Sim does well. <laughs> the pressure's on him. He's gone and more pressure carries with him as, as he takes his Aggie uh, title into the NBA. But, yeah, no, it's helped a lot. Thank you, Coach. All righty.